All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning, I'm Abhishek Mukhopadhyay, the headlines. European Union parliamentarians slam Pakistan for harboring terrorists back India on Kashmir issue. Government inaugurates 15 power projects in Jammu and Kashmir to achieve 24 into 7 uninterrupted power supply. Attacks on Saudi oil industries and act of war, says US Secretary of State. Prasar Bharti funded documentary Moti Bagh nominated for Oscars. And in cricket, India defeats South Africa by 7 wickets in Mohali T20 International. European Union, EU parliamentarians Risha Chaleski and Snuvio Martasialo have backed India on the Kashmir issue and slammed Pakistan for harboring terrorists. During a special debate of the plenary of the European Parliament, Chaleski described India as the greatest democracy of the world. He said the European Union Parliament needs to look at terrorist attacks that took place in Jammu and Kashmir. These terrorists did not land from the moon. They come from the neighboring country, Mr. Chaleski said. He slammed Pakistan for providing a safe haven to terrorists despite international pressure. Here is one of the most beautiful areas of India and with security and stability could be so enormously prosperous. But for over 70 years it has had an unsettled status and has been under threat, afflicted by externally sponsored terrorism and extremism. And at last there is an opportunity to rectify this situation. Another EU Parliament member, Mark Martha Sialo said Pakistan has threatened to use nuclear weapons, which is a cause of concern to the European Union. While accusing Islamabad of human rights violations, he said, Pakistan-based terrorists have been able to plan bloody terror attacks even in Europe. Opening the debate on behalf of the Vice President of the European Commission, EU Minister Tute Tupurainen urged India and Pakistan to resolve Kashmir issue through dialogue. India has expressed regret over the decision of the government of Pakistan to deny overflight clearance for the VVIP special flight for a second time in two weeks, which is otherwise granted routinely by any normal country. In a statement, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Ravish Kumar said, Pakistan should reflect upon its decision to deviate from well-established international practice. He said Islamabad should reconsider its old habit of misrepresenting the reasons for taking unilateral action. Union Prime Minister R.K. Singh and Jammu and Kashmir Governor Satya Pal Malik have jointly inaugurated 15 power projects and laid the foundation stone for 20 others worth 10,000 crore rupees in the state. Addressing a function in Srinagar, Prime Minister said the government is working to ensure 24 hours electricity supply to all the citizens of the country, including in Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh. He said the power supply in this winter will be much better than in the past. Speaking on the occasion, Governor Satya Pal Malik said, development works in Jammu and Kashmir will prompt people of Pakistan-occupied Kashmir to revolt against Islamabad and join India. Meanwhile, Union Minister Jitendra Singh has said that the transition of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh to Union territories will be smooth. He said any arrangement or mechanism which evolves will be in the best interest of all the stakeholders. Dr. Jitendra Singh was addressing the annual conference of Chief Secretaries and principal secretaries of all states in New Delhi yesterday. Bipole for Marsalang constituency of Ladakh Autonomous Hill Development Council, LAHDC Leh, is taking place today. The councillor seat fell vacant following the resignation of Jamyang Shering Namgyal after he was elected as Lok Sabha MP from Ladakh constituency. BJP has filled it, Stanzin Chospel, while Congress party has given mandate to Sarpanch of Stoke Village, Tashi Nurbo, and Rinchan Gurmat is in phrase independent candidate for the seat. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address a rally at Nashik in Maharashtra today on the concluding day of the state chief minister Devendra Fadnavis Mahajanadesh Yatra. The Mahajanadesh Yatra was held in phases in a bid to reach out to masses ahead of the assembly polls in the state expected to be held next month. More from our correspondent. There is a huge 
jubilant atmosphere among the BJP party workers in Maharashtra as Prime Minister Narendra Modi is visiting Nasik to grace Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis's Mahajanadesh Yatra. The supporters and party workers of the BJP believe that PM Modi attending the culmination program of the Yatra and addressing people will give a further impetus to the party and will channelize the grassroots party workers to work with utmost zeal for the ensuing assembly elections next month in Maharashtra. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Nasik. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will hold a review meeting with public sector banks today. Introduction of the repo rate linked products to step up affordable credit, doorstep banking facility, monitoring of loans to MSMEs, small traders and collaboration of banks with non-banking financial companies, NBFCs for co-origination of loans are some of the agenda expected to come up for discussion during the meeting. The centre is expected to review the announcement made by the Finance Minister last month to mandate release of security documents within 15 days of loan closure. This is All in the Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates, follow us on Twitter at AIR News Alerts. A central team led by Joint Secretary in the National Disaster Management Authority is on a two-day visit to Madhya Pradesh to take stock of the damages caused by the flood. Meanwhile, the flood situation has improved in the Malwa Nimar region while it has deteriorated in Chambal division. More from a correspondent. Rising water levels in the Chambal and the Sindh rivers have led to flooding of villages along the rivers in Bhind and Morena district. Around 3,000 people have been evacuated safely till now. More than 750 personnel of the Home Guards, Army, Police and SDRF are continuously rescuing people to safe places. Crops are also estimated to be damaged in an area of about 700 hectares. The MED department has also issued an orange alert for heavy rains in today in 13 districts including Saga, Chhatarpur, Damo and Vidya. Sanjeev Sharma, AIA News, Bhopal. In the Meteorological Department, IMD has issued a red alert indicating extremely heavy rainfall for Mumbai and Raigarh districts. I report. As a precautionary measure, the state government has declared holiday for all schools and junior colleges in Mumbai, Thane and Konkan region today. The municipal corporation has requested citizens to avoid venturing around the sea and into waterlogged areas. Mumbai has broken its 65-year record of highest seasonal rainfall record, according to BNC and state government, and is still counting. Till Sunday, the city had recorded 3,453.4 mm rainfall, while the previous record was in 1954, when it poured 3,452 mm rain from June to September. In Tamil Nadu, heavy rain lashed Chennai and its adjoining districts last night. Tiruvallur has witnessed a maximum of 21 cm rain, followed by Pundi Reservoir, 20 cm. The rain covered almost the whole of Chennai city, leading to waterlogging in low-lying areas. The Department of Post has announced commencing international speed post EMS service to Bosnia and Herzegovina, Brazil, Ecuador, Kazakhstan, Lithuania and North Macedonia. EMS or Express Mail Service is a premium service that enables its users to send documents and merchandise faster. An official release said the EMS service to these countries will henceforth be available at major post offices across India. Jal Shakti Ministry has taken an initiative to develop National Water Museum to raise awareness among people on conservation of the natural resource. According to an official release, the ministry is also organizing a two-day international workshop from today, which will be attended by experts from India and abroad. The outcome of the workshop will be a blueprint for establishing the proposed National Water Museum under the aegis of Jal Shakti Ministry. In Uttar Pradesh, 30-month-old Yogi government has completed half-term in office today. State government is set to be celebrate the halfway mark of the tenure by holding functions across the state and highlight its achievements. A report. Riding on the waves of change in regime and cashing on people's anger against the poor law and order situation, BJP came to the power in his state with thumping majority 30 months back. The appointment of a man clad in saffron was also a surprise to many when Yogi Adityanath took the oath of office on March 19, 2017. Since then, the Mahant of the Goraknath Temple has tried his best to give good governance. Today, Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath would release a booklet on achievements of his 30 months tenure and address a press conference at his official residence. Sushil Chandra Tiwari, AIR News, Lucknow. 
Commuters may face hardships in the national capital today as transport bodies have called for a day-long strike to protest against various provisions of the amended Motor Vehicle Act, including steep hike in penalties for various traffic-related offences. The United Front of Transport Associations, UFTA, has called for the strike. Many schools in the national capital will remain closed today. Niti Aayog Vice Chairman and Chairman of the National Nutrition Mission, Dr. Rajiv Kumar, has said during the ongoing portion ma, the government is giving special attention to those 250 districts of the country where the malnutrition level is higher than the national average. The entire September month has been celebrated as the Rashtriya portion ma across the country to address the malnutrition challenges. In an exclusive interview to AIR News, Dr. Kumar said the focus of the government will be towards improving the status of malnutrition in such districts so that they can be brought at the national average. Aspirational districts are a special focus for all our activities. And they, you see, because these uh, districts have been left behind, the nourishment levels are low compared to the others. So they will be a focus of our campaign during this month. Tune into the FM Gold channel of All India Radio at 9.30 tonight to listen to this exclusive broadcast. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo has criticized the attacks on the Saudi oil industry as an act of war as President Trump ordered a substantial increase in sanctions against Iran, which Washington has linked to the strikes. The comments raised the risk of a wider conflict in the Gulf region after the weakened strikes on the heart of the kingdom's oil industry knocked out half its production. Mr. Pompeo's comment came as Saudi Arabia displayed what it said were fragments of 25 drones and cruise missiles fired at two facilities in the country's east, leaving them engulfed in flames. Yemen's Iran-backed Houthi rebels, who have claimed Saturday strikes, vowed that they had the means to hit dozens of targets in the United Arab Emirates. A Prasar Bharti-funded short movie has been nominated for the Oscars. The movie Moti Bagh, revolving around the life and hard work of an octogenarian farmer from Uttarakhand, has been directed by three-time National Award winner Nirmal Chandra Dandrial. The central character of the film, Vidya Dat Sharma, lives in Sanguda village of Kalji Khal block of Pori district. Moti Bagh is the name of the farm of the octogenarian farmer, which was set up in 1967. In cricket, skipper Virat Kohli's unbeaten knock of 72 runs guided India to beat South Africa by seven wickets in the second T20 at Mohali last night. India chased down the victory target of 150 runs in 19 overs, riding on a stunning start by both the op openers Rohit Sharma and Shikhar Dhawan. Later, Kohli and Shreyas Iyer steered the team to victory. Virat slammed unbeaten 72 runs off 52 balls. Shikhar Dhawan scored 40 runs of 31 balls. In badminton, A's Indian shuttlers P.V. Sindhu, Sai Praneet and Parupalli Kashyap will play the pre-quarterfinal matches at the China Open in Changzhou, China today. Reigning world champion Sindhu beat China's Li Shui Rui 21-18-21-12 to set up a clash with Thailand's Ponpawi Cho Chu Wong. In the men's singles, Praneet defeated Thailand's Supanyu Aving Sanon while Kashyap beat France's Bryce Leverdez yesterday. Today, Praneet will face China's Lu Guangzhou, while Kashyap lock horns with seven seeded Indonesian and Tony Sinsuka Ginting. And now, for an overview of today's newspapers, is over to Tanvi Taneja. Thank you, Abhishek. The newspapers led with different stories today. The Times of India leads with fearing epidemic among kids, young, government bans e cigarettes. The Indian Express headlines SC sets October 18th to wrap Ayodhya case arguments. The Hindu writes, SC allows Ayodhya Mediation Committee to resume talks. Drug money being used to fund terror in JNK, says DGP, reports the Tribune. Government plans differential rates for delayed GST, reports the Hindustan Times. Government to invite bids from global miners, writes the Financial Express, adding, move to end Coal India's near monopoly on the fuel as India tries to cut imports. And finally, now an algorithm that can identify bullies on Twitter. Well, the Times of India reports that scientists have developed new machine learning algorithms which can successfully identify bullies and aggressors on Twitter with 90% accuracy. And with that, it's back to you, Abhishek. Thank you, Tanvi. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. European Union parliamentarians slam Pakistan for harboring terrorists back India on the Kashmir issue. Government inaugurates 15 power projects in Jammu and Kashmir to achieve 24 into 7 uninterrupted power supply. Attacks on Saudi oil industries and act of war, says U.S. Secretary of State.
प्रसार भारती फंड डॉक्यूमेंट्री मोती बाग नॉमिनेटेड फॉर ऑस्कर्स एंड इन क्रिकेट इंडिया डिफीट साउथ अफ्रीका बाई सेवन विकेट्स इन मोहाली टी ट्वेंटी इंटरनेशनल एंड विद दैट वी एन द मॉर्निंग न्यूज हैव अ नाइस डे